so hi everyone today we will be discussing about uh, a very important methodology in reinforcement learning called as the actor critique method so in my previous videos i have covered many things on reinforcement learning like reinforcement learning basics mabs contextual bandages monte carlo game dev how to train open ai agents using reinforce algorithm and dqns so now taking a step further uh, we will be discussing about actor critique method that is specifically the advantage actor critique method today that is called as a a to c algorithm so let's get started so in the previous uh, videos i have already discussed about two major algorithms over which the whole actor critique method is based on that is reinforce and dqns so uh, taking a few points from those videos uh, let's focus on the problems pitfalls that are present in both of these algorithms reinforce and the dqn algorithm so the reinforce algorithm is basically just for a recapitulation belongs to the family of policy networks which uh, tries to predict the probability of actions to be taken so in such cases what happens is that the neural network that we train gives us the probability of action to be taken and we don't require any external policy or any q value to be maintained we can directly use these probabilities to get to the uh, to take an action and move ahead in the environment so let's understand uh, a few problems with this reinforce algorithm so reinforce algorithm is basically episodic in nature so uh, environments where which are non episodic in nature like robotics and trading where there is no end and the agent is continuously engaged in this cases we don't know how we can use reinforce algorithm now also in case of reinforce algorithm if you have seen my last video the reward is given in the end of the whole episode so we need to wait for the episode to end to get to the final reward that we can get reinforce algorithm may be problematic for sparse reward systems as well so last time i tried my uh, mountain car training mountain car environment from open ai gym using reinforce algorithm it was very hard to train because uh, the final reward that comes in is the only reward that you are getting else all the rewards are minus 1 so reinforce algorithm is not that great with sparse reward systems as well now uh, to a point where we are saying that ki when the episode is long we are getting a reward in the end of the episode why it is problematic because the more frequently we update the system the lower the variance will be for example if a episode has 5000 steps and we are updating after getting the final reward and assume that the final re reward is a fluke so uh, by chance you get some high or low reward so in that case that would be get, that would get updated throughout the system so we would wish to update it more frequently as we do in dqns so in a previous video i have already ex also explained how to use dqns so let's understand a few problems with dqns as well so already explained in that video we would be using overhead such as experience replay and target and copy sequence to make the training stable now this is always an overhead and we need to code a lot of things apart from that it is time consuming as well apart from that we need also need to decide over the policy uh, to be taken as dqns are majorly belonging to value based methods where we are predicting the q value for an action and not directly the probability for the action in a combination of the q value alongside the policy that we choose we would be finally taking an action which is not in, in line with reinforce so in reinforce we were not having any such sort of uh, overheads apart from that experience replay that we used to stabilize the training is based on the idea of markov property of memorylessness that means that the future state is beyond uh, is dependent on the current state but we might have such systems where the future state may, dep may depend on multiple previous states right so in that case as experience replay might not be of great help and training dqns would be tough so here we have seen that there are two major like some problems with both reinforce value based methods as well as policy networks policy network was a reinforce algorithm and value based method was dqns now can we combine these two models to overcome all these problems and get the best of the two worlds yes so we will be discussing about the actor critique method today which <clears throat> it is which is sort of a hybrid model that is coming out of dqns plus reinforce algorithm so basically the things that we are getting in case of our actor critique method is that we learn incrementally without waiting for the whole episode to end there is no experience replay used and training is also stable so how do we achieve that so in actor critique as the name is suggesting we would be using two neural networks one is actor and other is a critique so at the actor would be the policy network uh, which we use uh, in case of reinforce algorithm and the critique would be the state value network that which is very similar to dqns so you got my point so we have combined these two models together 
and now we are calling it as actor critique where the major algorithm would be policy network and its critique would be state value network that is a dqn so the loss function that we used to update in reinforce algorithm was minus 1 into summation of log probability into discounted rewards but now in case of actor uh, actor critique method uh, the loss function for the policy network would become minus 1 into summation of log probability into reward plus gamma value future value function for q value for the future state minus q value for the current state so here you can see that this particular extra term discounted reward we have removed and this current uh, this extra term that we are getting we would be getting from the dqn that we are training that is a critique as you can see that the q values for the future state and the current state would be given by the dqn and there is a term very similar that we have already discussed in the bellman equation so it is very similar on those lines only now we would be also be having a loss function for the dqn also but that is very similar to the, which is a uh, mean square error for target q value and a uh, predicted q value so the total loss function for the whole algorithm actor critic method would be this particular loss plus uh, the mean square error between target q value and predicted q value uh there would be one more concept that i need to introduce before jumping in that is called as an n step learning so basically there are three types of learning that we can do in reinforcement learning one is online learning that is we are updating the agent after every step uh that we that we would have done in case of dqns if we wouldn't have been using experience replay so if you remember experience replay was more of a buffer we were storing some samples and then eventually updating the whole model if we won't be using experience replay then in case of dqns you would be updating it after every action taken that is called as online learning and monte carlo so monte carlo i've already discussed so in case of monte carlo we wait for the whole episode to end and then update the values which was the case of reinforce algorithm now n step learning is somewhere in between these two learnings so what we would be doing is that we would be waiting for some x steps to be taken we won't wait for the algorithm to, uh, for the episode to end but we will wait till some n steps and eventually once the n steps happens we will be training the whole system so that we can maintain we can update the system more frequently so the environment that we will be training now would be blackjack so i am testing out with a uh, different environments every time this time it is a card game that is coming from open ai game so here you can see that the how the ui looks like so i will tell you what are the rules for blackjack so in black in case of blackjack we have two major players one is a dealer and another is a player so the player would be our agent now the goal of the game is that uh, to obtain a hand of cards which has a value close to 21 it should not cross 21 right it should be close to 21 the agent can take two actions at a time uh, uh, two out uh, one action out of the two possible action at a time hit the agent request for another card from the deck or stand the agent is satisfied with his current hand and does not require any more cards so there are two actions that are possible in this game apart from that the dealer follows a fixed set of rules in open ai game environment where uh, he would be hitting again and again until his value reaches 17 or more and then stand so so in the blackjack environment each card has a point value so like if the card is 2 uh, the point value is 2 if the card is 3 the point value is 3 uh, and for face cards uh, for the face cards like jack uh, king queen it is 10 and for the ace it can be 1 or 11 depending upon your current combination you, you wish to choose it how you are considering it so for example if you have a hand with ace and 9 and 2 the total value can be either taken as 12 because 9 plus 2 is 11 and ace is equals to 1 then can be 12 or it can be uh, 11 plus 9 plus 2 that is 22 so depending upon how you are playing or uh, depending upon your strategy you can change the value for the ace it is interchangeable now the goal of the game is to maximize the expected reward so uh, the case is that the agent will win the game when uh, his uh, the value of the uh, cards in his hand is more than the dealer's card value of the dealer's card and less than 21 the state is represented by a tuple of three elements in open ai game where a uh, where uh, with as you can see the tuple a comma b comma c where a is the sum of cards of the player b is the sum of cards of the dealer and c is the boolean representing whether the whether the player's card has a ace or not because ace is interchangeable right so depending upon that this is the uh, state space that we get from open ai game for blackjack uh, we will be discussing about the codes for uh, coding out a actor critique method in reinforcement learning to train 
black jack environment in open air gym so let's get started so first of all we will be importing all the required libraries so you can see that i've also imported pi game pi game would be, would be helping us to visualize the whole uh environment uh, in our local system apart from that i've also imported tensorflow so that i can train the whole neural network to tensorflow next i would be initiating the black jack environment i this is something that we have already seen in a previous video how we initiate open air gym environments and we are taking the input shape that is input shape is basically the shape of the state space that we are having that would be uh, that would be three year because uh, in black jack the uh, the dimension of a state variable is three and number of actions is basically the total number of actions that the agent can take that is equals to two in case of black jack that is hit or stand now we will be designing the actor critique network so i would be using a multi output network for designing this actor critique network so what is a multi output network so in case of a multi output network we have the same input the whole body remains the same but the, the but the model is able to give multiple outputs of from dif uh, of different ranges so here you can see that uh, i have first of all taken an input then i have designed the inner the hidden layers of the network now here you can see that they are having two outputs now one output is directly a dense layer without any activation and another output is a activation layer with softmax so the other layer is basically probabilities and second is basically the q values that we would be getting for uh, that we are that we would be getting for the critique and softmax represents uh, the probability for the actions that the actor will be generating so uh, output one is the head for the critique and output two is the head for the actor now here you can see that i how i am compiling the model so input is main input but the output is a list of two values output 2 and output 1 and eventually the optimizer is just uh, one optimizer that will be helping us to optimize the whole network you can also uh, design two different networks that is up to your wish i will be declaring a few constants here the total number of episodes for which i wish to train the co uh, train the model uh, the gamma value that i would be using in updating in the loss function Uh, n equals to five for the n-step learning. So after every five step, we will be updating the environment. And state action reward next steps are done. So basically, list that we wish to store the values in. Uh, now coming to the training loop. So it is the most important thing. So first of all, uh, we will be looping over the total number of episodes for which we wish to train, and then resetting the environment. And for every episode that we are uh, uh, for every episode that we are training the agent for, uh, we would be first. inputting the state and take the action probabilities we are skipping the q values as you know that we have taken a multi output network so it would be giving us two outputs so we are ignoring the second output here you can see now depending upon the probabilities we are taking an action and then we are uh, getting the next state the reward the done flag uh, by inputting that action to the environment and then storing all these values in the dqs that we have mentioned earlier, that we have uh, initialized earlier now here you can see that here the main crux is Once the count uh, count uh, is greater than n, that is the number of steps that we have. We are resetting the count equals to zero. So it is basically after every five steps we wish to store the we wish to update the model. We are converting all the very all the DQs that we have into tensors, and then using gradient tape, I would be first calculating the uh, loss functions and then applying those gradients. So here you can see the how the loss function is calculated. So we are taking uh, we are getting probabilities for the action pro actions. and the q values for the actions using the model we are recalculating them using tf dot gather as q values would be for all the possible actions we would be getting the q value for the specific action that we have taken uh now we would be again calculating uh, we would be again using the model to calculate the q value for the next state as you as you saw in the loss functions that i have mentioned earlier we are using the value function uh, q value for the future state as well as the current state so we need to calculate the q value for the future state as well so here we are ignoring the action probabilities and just taking the q value for the next state and then again taking the maximum value out of that q value 2 that is uh, we are considering the maximum value from the next state q value now we are calculating the target value that we would be considering for training our critique network so it is nothing but reward plus gamma into q value 2 that is the reward that we got into the uh, gamma into the future reward that we would have got so target value becomes this for the critique so the we are calculating the value loss term so as i told you we would be having two losses one is the policy network loss and another is the value loss so the value loss become is equals to target value minus the current q value whole square and taking a mean over it so it's very mean squared error that we call is what getting implemented here 
uh, for this we are calculating a term called as advantage so as i told you in the beginning that we are uh, we would be calling this as advantage actor to critique method so here is the advantage that we are calculating so advantage is nothing but target value minus q value and then we are again we are getting the action probabilities for the action that we have taken uh, as this would again action the uh, the first line that you can see gives us the output for all probabilities for all the actions so we need to get the probability for the specific action that we have taken and then calculate the final loss as mentioned earlier and then applying gradient tape now this particular code snippet i would be using to visualize the whole network as i have showed you earlier a gif in the blog itself so this code will help us to visualize this i have already explained this whole code snippet in one of my previous videos so you can go and visit it so on uh, analyzing the winner percentage for the trained agent stood for 38% of the uh, total episodes uh, that we have so i played 1000 games out of which I, we were, that agent was able to win nearly 38% of the total games now i uh, again uh, played the same game with a random agent and the success rate was about 26% so here you can see that we have got an increase of 12% after training the agent i firmly believe that ki, uh, if we would have trained for some longer time the result would have been great but still uh, here you can see that a direct impact where the agent is able to now play blackjack uh, comparatively better than a random player.